Hello and welcome to Train Signal. You're watching Network I.O. Control or NIOC. In this lesson, I'll start off by answering the question, what is Network I.O. Control? From there, I'll show you what's new in vSphere 5 Network I.O. Control before I show you how to configure Network I.O. Control in your virtual infrastructure. So with that, let's get started. What is Network I.O. Control to begin with? Well, it's often called NIOC, and Network I.O. Control is essentially quality of service for the virtual network. So in other words, there could be traffic traversing the virtual network, like NFS traffic, iSCSI, virtual machine traffic, fault tolerance traffic, and vMotion traffic. All these different types of traffic can uh, adversely affect other types of traffic. So, for example, if you have a vMotion occurring, or let's say multiple vMotions, that could actually slow down your virtual machine traffic. So you don't want, let's say, end user applications slowed down by uh, perhaps a, a vMotion occurring or fault tolerance traffic. So what you're able to do with Network I.O. Control is to th essentially throttle um, these different types of traffic and ensure that the traffic type that's the highest priority to you, um, primarily your applications, most likely your application and storage traffic, uh, gets the uh, most bandwidth or gets the bandwidth really that it deserves. Now, Network I.O. Control does require vSphere Enterprise Plus, and it does require that you're also using the vSphere Distributed Switch, or the VDS. Before I cover what's new in vSphere 5 with Network I.O. Control, first let me give you a little bit of background about it and a little bit more information. It was a new feature in vSphere 4.1, and it's called NIOC for short, and I've also seen it um, written as NetIOC in VMware documentation. Like I said, it's quality of service for the virtual network, and it uses shares, which you're already used to using in vSphere with resource pools. So you're used to configuring uh, shares for a resource pool, let's say for CPU and memory. Now you're configuring shares for network quality of service as well. NIOC ensures the best performance for critical vSphere infrastructure services like NFS, iSCSI, fault tolerance, and vMotion when there's high network utilization. But you may also want to give high priority, let's say, to Tier 1 um, applications. Applications that might be negatively affected by perhaps um, a less uh, priority, a lesser priority of uh, vMotion or backup traffic that's using NFS. So you really have to understand your infrastructure and your applications and the type of network traffic that's being created. Perhaps you want to split out this network traffic um, if it's actually causing too many problems. But for the most part, this quality of service provided in NIOC is going to be exactly what um, virtual networks need to ensure that uh, your most critical traffic gets the priority that it deserves in the virtual infrastructure network. Now there's more information if you want to go check it out on vSphere Network IO best practices at that URL right there. So now let's move on and let's talk about what's new in vSphere 5 Network IO Control. New in vSphere 5 with Network I.O. Control, there is one new, uh, rather nice feature, which is user-defined network resource pools. So what this does is it allows you to create, essentially, resource pools for network traffic. So you can create a resource pool, and you can assign, let's say, to that resource pool maybe a high priority. You create another resource pool that's medium, another resource pool that's low. And so you can think of this as uh, your different uh, SLAs or your different quality of service levels that you're going to provide. Maybe you have multiple tenants in the virtual infrastructure, or they even could be just types of uh, uh, applications in your infrastructure. So your Tier 1 applications, those go into the highest level, and maybe all your print servers and you know backup appliances, those go into the lowest level, and so forth. Maybe the end-user virtual machine traffic is in the medium level. Um, and then what you're able to do with this is you can even bridge the virtual and the physical network uh, by actually assigning um, quality of service 802.1 tagging to those uh, resource pools. So the virtual network traffic that leaves the virtual network out onto the physical uh, infrastructure has an 802.1 uh, tag on it, actually, that's going to stay with it. So this tagging, this quality of service network traffic tagging that you're doing in the virtual infrastructure is actually going to go out onto the physical infrastructure as well. And if there's traffic that's tagged out on the physical infrastructure, it could go into the virtual infrastructure and uh, those traffic tags would be respected as well. So that's what's new in vSphere 5 with Network I.O. Control. 
And in just a second, I'll show you how to enable or create one of these user-defined network resource pools. So now we're to the point of configuring network I.O. control. And to do that, of course, we have to first have a virtual distributed switch. We also have to be using vSphere Enterprise Plus. So let's go over to our vSphere client, and I'll show you how to do it step by step. Here I am in my vSphere client, and to configure network I.O. control, we need to go into the networking inventory. I'll go up here to the inventory and down to networking. And then, like I said, you need to be using a virtual distributed switch. So let's go ahead and create a virtual distributed switch. Since I don't already have one, it's not hard. I'm just going to click here, New vSphere Distributed Switch. We're going to use a vSphere Distributed Switch version 5, and it says that the following new features are available. A user-defined network resource pool in network I.O. control, as well as NetFlow and port mirroring. So this is what I was talking about right here. So your distributed virtual switch needs to be version 5. So if you have an earlier version, uh, like a version 4.1, it might still, or it will still support network I.O. control but it won't support these user-defined network resource pools. So you'd have to upgrade your distributed virtual switch to the latest version, version 5. I'll click Next here. Uh, we'll just leave it as the default here. We'll just call it DV switch. That's not really important. Uh, we'll go ahead and add uh, server ESX3. I'll click Next here. It says there's no physical adapters. Do you want to continue adding the host? Yeah, sure, let's go ahead. We'll uh, automatically create a port group and click finish. So we've got our distributed virtual switch. Of course, without uplinks, any uh, virtual machines we put in this new DV port group won't be able to access the physical network. That's important. I don't want to just blow by that error message because um, it could be important. Uh, but for the purposes of showing you how to enable uh, network I.O. control, it really isn't that important. So we've got our distributed virtual port group here. And normally when you first create a new distributed virtual switch, the next thing you'll do is to right click here and migrate virtual machines over from the standard uh, vSwitch to the new distributed virtual uh, switch or distributed virtual port group. So I'll say cancel there because I don't want to do that just yet. We don't have any uplinks to find. That's also a very critical piece that you normally do during the setup. But more relevant to network I.O. control here, what I want to do is to show you um, how to configure these user-defined resource pools that are new in vSphere 5. To do that, you go to the distributed virtual switch and then to resource allocation. So notice the network resource pools that are right here. And also notice that network I.O. control right now is currently disabled. So even with vSphere 4.1, there were these network resource pools, but they were just uh, very specific resource pools for only um, this particular type of system traffic, fault-tolerant traffic. Host-based replication, of course, wasn't there in vSphere 4.1 because that's a new vSphere 5 feature. iSCSI management, NFS, virtual machine traffic, and vMotion traffic. Notice how uh, these different types of uh, traffic uh, pools or resource pools uh, have different adapter shares. So here's normal uh, share value for fault tolerance and here's high for virtual machine traffic. Notice right now there's no quality of service priority tagging. That's a new thing in vSphere 5 and notice that right now they all have unlimited um, traffic throughput on the virtual network. They have an unlimited amount of uh, megabits per second they can send and receive on the virtual network. But then notice this new section down here called User Defined Resource Pools and how we can go up here and we can actually create a new networking resource pool. But first, let's enable Network I.O. Control on the DV switch. So here I'll click Properties and right here, that's all you have to do actually to enable NIOC on a distributed virtual switch. I'll click OK here. And there we go, Network I.O. Control is enabled. That's all we had to do. And immediately these uh, resource pools down here and these share values take effect on any virtual machines that are connected to that DV port group. So the virtual machine traffic would immediately get a high share value for any packets sent or received across the virtual network. But now we can go in here and we can create our own new networking resource pools. So let's say that we want to bring some tier one applications into the virtual infrastructure and we want to make sure that those applications will get relatively high priority in the virtual network. So we could create this network resource pool and I'll give it a name of tier one. It's going to be a user defined resource pool. Then we could set the physical adapter share here to high. 
so it gets a higher priority as compared to the other types of traffic uh, traversing the virtual network. And then let's say out on our physical network, let's say on our Cisco switches, we've set up queue scheduling and quality of service uh, queues based on our QoS uh, priority tags. So here we could define, let's say, uh, that this traffic for these Tier 1 applications gets a quality of service priority tag of 6, so that out there on those Cisco switches uh, in the queues, uh, that quality of service tag will be seen, and then those packets from our Tier 1 applications will actually get a higher priority out on the physical network, just as they do on the virtual network. So we can say OK here. And here we've defined our Tier 1 resource pool. And then the next thing we need to do is to associate a port group with this new network resource pool. Now, so far we just have this one port group over here called DV Port Group. I'm just going to right click here and let's go ahead and create another new port group. And let's call this one actually Tier 1 Apps. So we've got the Tier 1 Apps port group. I'll say Finish here. And then we've got the Tier 1 User Defined Network Resource Pool. So let's go ahead and click Manage Port Groups. And I'll select the Tier 1 Apps Port Group. And then what we'll do is we'll say that we want this associated with the Tier 1 Network Resource Pool. So I can say OK here. And now our Tier 1 Apps Resource Pool is associated with the Tier 1 Network Resource Pool so that it gets a high physical adapter share in the virtual infrastructure um, across all of our ESXi servers. Uh, it also has a priority tag for quality of service of 6 so that if that traffic goes out on the physical network that it will also get a higher priority out there in the physical network. Now you could also do uh, multi-tenancy with this so you could have tenant 1, 2, 3, um, you could also have um, you know a, a SLA defined resource pools over here like uh, platinum, gold, and silver However you want to lay it out, it's up to you to design, but this capability is available to you in vSphere 5 if you have Enterprise Plus. Of course, at this point, to start using the Tier 1 apps, Distributed Virtual Port Group, and the Tier 1 User Defined Network Resource Pool, we'd want to migrate uh, the virtual machine networking from, let's say, a standard vSwitch or from another Distributed Virtual Port Group over to the new Tier 1 apps Distributed Virtual Port Group. And that brings us back to the summary for this lesson covering Network I.O. Control. We started off by answering the question, what is Network I.O. Control, or NIOC? And you found out that it's essentially quality of service for the virtual network. It's only available in vSphere Enterprise Plus at this point, and it does require that you're using a distributed virtual switch. Network I.O. Control has some predefined network resource pools for the common virtual infrastructure services, but new in vSphere 5, you can create your own user-defined network resource pools. I showed you how to do that, as well as how to configure network I.O. control in your virtual infrastructure. Thanks for watching this lesson on vSphere 5 network I.O. control.